Good morning guys. Today I'm going to talk about tire changing, a form of a tire changing clinic, different rims, etc. I'll use a couple of different bikes. I'll use my rear entry dropouts on my uh, on my TT bike. I'll use regular entry dropouts. I'll talk about a front wheel and eventually I'm also going to actually do the change of the tires on the tube. Uh, using one of my aero wheels right here and some of the different tools so it should be a fun time. bike you see that right here the bike the, the skewer needs to go to the rear so what i need to do and on both i always try to make less tension on the derailleur you see that right here there is a lot of tension on the chain and a lot of people will stop and they'll be in this gear or they'll go to a light gear still in the big chain ring and look how much tension there is in here that's gonna make it that's gonna make my work really hard and also there is no clearance whatsoever between the derailleur and the wheel so the first thing to do is to shift to your small chain ring so you got a flat you need to switch to shift to the small chain ring on my rear entry dropout you see on the other end if I go like this my chain is too slack my derailleur is completely tracked up but it's too slack on this particular bike so I'll be using about the middle, which gives me plenty of clearance, still gives me some, and go. Then, stop it. Then all I need to do is to take the skewer over on this side, right here, and do the skewer, nice and gently. And then I will just, now that it's loose, I will go and literally just pull out you see right here, out, and then I take the chain away from the cogs. Sure, you'll get dirty when you do this a little bit. That's all you need it's to do. Place the wheel back here, lining up, but it's critical that this goes in between the chain. If I go like this, well, the chain is not around. So I pull the chain from the inside and go around and put it somewhere in the gear where I had it before, somewhere around there. It may not be the perfect cog, but it's close enough. And then you just line it up with the dropouts and it should go straight in. There you go. I had to go and clear the brakes. That's the other thing. You need to undo your brakes. On this particular bike, there is no quick release to loosen the brakes. I'll show you on my other bike what I'm talking about. I always try to line it up a little bit. So I'll go one, a little bit of tension and loosely tighten the skewer on this end. Then I'll put the bike on the ground. Re-loosen it. Make sure everything is flush and lined up and then tighten it. Adjust the tension if necessary, but it shouldn't be. Then if I can readjust to go back to the gear that I want to be starting with. Small chain ring and everything is good. This is how you do on a rear entry dropout. So now that we unmounted the wheel, now we're going to mount it again. So I remember where I left the driller. So all I need to do is place the wheel back here, lighting up. But it's critical that this goes in between the chain. If I go like this, well, the chain is not around. So I pull the chain from the inside and go around and put it somewhere in the gear where I had it before. Somewhere around there. It may not be the perfect cog, but it's close enough. And then you just line it up with the dropouts and it should go straight. There you go. I had to go and clear the brakes. That's the other thing. You need to undo your brakes. On this particular bike, there is no quick release to loosen the brakes. I will show you on my other bike what I'm talking about. I always try to light it up a little bit. So I'll go one, a little bit of tension and loosely tighten the skewer on this end. Then I'll put the bike on the ground. Re-loosen it. Make sure everything is flush and lined up and then tighten it. 
adjust the tension if necessary, but it shouldn't be. Then if I can readjust to go back to the gear that I want to be starting with. Small chain ring. And everything is good. This is how you do on a rear end. Traditional bike. This this bike is quite old. I have over a hundred thousand miles on it and I love it. So first step getting back to the rear these are regular dropouts you see that they'll go down straight up and down these are traditional road bikes so in this case what makes it easiest is to go to the smallest cog the smallest cog altogether on road bikes typically you don't have to deal with a tt bike short chain, chain stay etc so i still have enough tension but a little bit of tension only it's not going to be hard for me to do it as opposed to if i were in the big chain ring let's put it in the big chain ring to show you if i am in the big chain ring and into a so cog as most people would stop look how much tension there is there it's really hard it's going to cut my fingers out when i'm trying to do it so always stop in a small chain ring and put it into the furthest cog, tallest gear out. Now, everything is scored. I have plenty of room between the spokes and the derailleur. It'll be very easy for me to take the wheel out. Next step, these are traditional brakes. So I need to use the quick release right here. You see that as I do this, this will give me more clearance on the brakes. They will open up a little bit and that gives me a clearance to clear the tires. Now, very simply, and I put it on the ground, real life, I'll undo the quick release. It's undone, and I have nothing else to do but to push down. And there it go. Now it's splitting the wheels, the, the, the chain, and there I have my tire is out. To put it back in, holding the bike with one hand, I split the chain, and I put the top chain on the last cog. I know I placed it there. Look how much room I have between the derailleur and, and the spokes. And now I push it down, line it up somewhat. I'm okay here on the brakes. I'll pull towards, slightly towards the back and down, and it will go down. It goes right in. My brakes are very tight. And then you just tighten it up making sure that you go and spin it again, help get some help from a friend, a post or something, and just put it back in the gear you want to start. Close the brakes. Now I need to undo my brake release, same as the rear. Of course, if I have these brakes, it's slightly different. And then I'll loosen the tire, the quick release up, here and you see that it's loose but it won't come out it's loose but it will not come out this is because I have safety bosses that I will show you so what I do is I do seven turns you got to hold this side here and you go one two three four five six seven turns to loosen that gap and now you can take the wheel off the reason for this is those little clever safety bosses that you can see right here you see that this is not flush this is designed for your own safety that even if you were to make a mistake and not tighten your skewer all the way you're riding and you're not going to lose your front wheel the rear wheel is held by gravity and it's not so so much of a problem but the front wheel has those safety bosses so you need to do those seven turns some bikes five turns is enough but every bike I've ever worked with, seven turns works. To put it back on, I line up the skewer on the dropouts and the tires here. Hold it, press slightly, and it goes right here. Press slightly and I bang on it, right? And then you do the same seven turns. Hold the right side. Set seven turns right there and then I adjust the tension where I want it to be that's a little bit too tight 
Always put your skewer towards the back like this. And then don't forget to close your brake. We're done. Okay, so now that I've put away the bikes, we're gonna talk about the tire, the, the tube change itself. Uh, first, a couple of the tools. This will be for the inflation. I really like those little pumps, those Lizin pumps, because they're telescopic. They go all the way through like this, and you, you know, you mount this on the far end. And it also gives me the clearance, you know, you put this and you actually screw it on the tube instead of having to hold it. And I can get easily 70 to 80 PSI with these little pumps. Yes, it takes a little bit of time. I love the fact that I can get them into my disc as well. There is the clearance to go, um, versatile, and they mount very discreetly right here in the back of the frame behind the water bottle so that I can have uh, maximum clearance on my feet, etc, etc. So love these little pumps. Lazing. Then the next step I need to talk about, well now let's go talk about the... I could use that. Go back in there, go. Slightly different versions, the black one is like this. I had a carbon one before, it didn't get to the same inflation. But these two are great. This goes onto my Kestro road bike. This one goes onto my TT bike, just to match the colors. And off we go. Then we have a couple of different tire lever weapons. I'll speak of this one in a bit. That's my preferred weapon, the speed lever. And well, as the name indicates, it makes things a little bit quicker. But it is bulkier to carry in your saddlebag. These are traditional and they are round like this and they have a little bit of leverage. A lot of people like them. They definitely will make things a little bit easier if you have a very tight tire. I like these Michelin ones which are flat. One because they are wider, they have a bigger grip, a bigger grip on the tire itself, but also because they're thinner and you can have two or three wrapped up in a you know with an elastic and it takes less room easier to to put into your um, saddlebag. This one I've seen this one only one time. It's a quick stick and it's more rubberized. It's rugged. It's good. It gives you really good leverage. It's probably the easiest, but of course, a lot of room in the saddlebag, almost as much as this, but without the asset of the speed lever. So let's go. Now, let's go and talk about the tire. I have deflated it. And the first thing that I do is to make sure that I am fully deflated because if I still have quite a bit of air and I have a slow leak and it's not enough to ride but I need to go, I need to push it all the way in so that I have room. Next step is to make sure that I slide the tire inside as much as I can. If it is flush to the rim, there is a lot less clearance. And let me show you this on this rim here. You see right there, you see that the bottom of the rim is not flat, it's concave. If I put it in the light, you can see it's grooved. So that means that if the tires are very close to the edges, they'll be way tighter around the rim and it will be very hard to clear the, basically the clinching part of the, of the tire, the, the rim, the, the uh, edge of the rim with the bead. You know, this is what they clinch in there. So that's what I do. I push them in so that it's all the way out. All the way inside, I mean, not out. And that gives me more clearance. Then, opposite of where the stem valve is, is where there will be the least tension on the rim. You think that makes no difference, but it actually will if you have a super tight tire to go on. So I'll take this one and I'll go and flip it over. That's what you do. You need to clear the hooked side of the tire lever underneath the tire. And that's where if the tire was very flush, I can't go in there. So you push it in, go below it, and then you flip it. And literally all you need to do is to flip it all the way through. Once you do this, you want to hold it with your thumb right here. Hold the bead on top of the rim so that it stays on the outside of the rim. And you want to slide forward. And you see that I can go 
and make it all the way through in one smooth motion. Sometimes you have to go and get yourself more weight and go through there and so. This is how it works. I'm going to demonstrate it again. I'm showing off how to put the tire on at the same time, I guess. But we'll just dissect this. Now let's use the speed lever. The speed lever starts the same. I have the hook right here that I need to go underneath the tire. And once I do, I extend this arm all the way onto the skewer and hook it on. That gives me the leverage and the consistency and that it's very easy to just push the tire out. In this case, that was fairly easy. These carbon rims do a good job without the zip for a force, but sometimes it's a struggle. So let's do it this way, all the way through. If it's your first time, I highly recommend the speed lever. Like I said, the only downside is that it takes quite a bit of room into your, uh, into your arsenal. And it also has a nice way to hook it back on. So anyway, once I am there, I undid the tire all the way through. I need to take the tube out. Same thing, I go opposite of the stem where there is the most room. And I take the tube out, that simple. Now here, I easily clear and take the stem out. Now, of course, in this case, because of the deep dish rim, I need to have an 80 millimeter valve, which is one of the considerations that you have to have when you're you know, buying bikes, buying rims, buying tubes. So now I need to find out why did I have a flat? Well, I will go and thread my fingers very slightly, very lightly inside the tire to see if I can find something that went through. And at the same time, I will examine the outside to see any type of cut, maybe a pebble of um, either rock or, or glass that went through. A lot of times you don't find anything and you're like, damn, what did the flat happen? Because it went in and out. Also, a very common flat is a pinch flat. A pinch flat is when basically you didn't have enough tire pressure and as you were, let me see if I have a flat rim here. This one is inflated, this one is not. A pinch flat, I didn't have enough tire pressure and then as I hit a bump or something, the tire this did this. And the tube was pinched in between the two. You know you have a pinch flat once you take the tube and on the tube you will find like a snake bite on it and it typically is on the inside of the tube so when you once you are home and you look at your tube you look underneath like this and the pinch flat will be on the inner side and you have two very distinct cuts and that's like well you user error you just didn't have enough tire pressure which we'll talk about so now my tube is out now it's time to put the new tube back in. I checked that there was no problem. These little valves work with either gravity, the Presta valves, or pressure. If I have enough pressure into it, it will stay extended and hold the air. But if I put very, a tiny amount of pressure, and now I will go and use my lips to put a little bit of air in it. You see, this way it holds some air, but if I flip it over, it's not enough, it went down. So I won't have the air in the tube that I need to. So either I make sure that I blow hard enough so that it holds the air, or I use gravity and I keep it facing down the whole time. So, you see, valve is down, and as it's down, I will slowly twist it without taking the air out. Why do I want air out? Uh, sorry, why do I want air in the tube? So that it is less easy to pinch it as I put it back in the rim. I'll show you how. I'll show you why I'm talking, what I'm talking about. So now I find my rim, I refine the, the hole where the stem goes into, dark on dark, very not easy. Where is the hole? Here when that happens, there it is. And I have the hole and I'll use gravity. So my tube, right from the top, letting it go and I will try to slide it inside the tire 
like this. And now it evenly will go and spread itself out. Tube all the way through. Clear over, clear the tire over the tube as quickly as I can. I mean, as soon as I can, but no rush. And then I make my way putting the tire inside. Now, because I held it the way I did, it goes in fairly easily, evenly. I don't have kinks, you know, a little bit of a bend here. And that's why you want air. If you have no air in it, it just doesn't want to hold its form. And you can easily pinch it as you go. The first thing you want to do is, as soon as you can, clear the bead of the tire at this point here. You see that right now, this moves. So I put it in there. And well, it went in straight, but now I need to make sure that I have room. If I push the stem all the way through to make sure that the other end of the tube is on the top of the tire so that the tire now can go and clinch in all the way through. Again, it drops into the groove so that I have more clearance. If I don't do that, I will struggle to put the tire all the way around. And if I do just this little change in detail, it should be nice and easy to get it at least close. You see now, the air, I'll change, the, I'll turn around so that the light is better. You see that now the air in the tube may make my life a little bit harder. I go through here and it wants to not fit in there. I push it as much as I can with my fingers on top of the rim, inside the groove itself. You visualize the groove and then you go. And at this point, actually that was fine. If it were to be a little too tight, I have a little too much air, I'm using a, a narrower tire. These are 25 millimeter tires. If you're using 23s or even 20s. So you take some of the air out. And now you can push all the way in. So again, making sure that the tire itself is all the way in the center. Remember, visualize. You don't want it close to the edge. You want to push it in. And then it will help you. And it will have the least tension for you to put it over on top. Now this is, if it were to be hard, it is a little bit hard now, I could use my same tire lever. But instead of using it that way, scooping the tire up, now I want to reverse it and hook the bead on top. So I will go right to here, see, I want to visualize, you want to go over the rim and push the tire in. And I will try to find a way to put it underneath like this. And I'll find the rim and then I'll flip it over. The only downside of doing this is that if your tube is somewhere in the, in the middle, you could pinch the tire, you could pinch the tube there. Not a problem here because I know my tube is all the way in the center. I could just flip it over like this. That being said, whenever possible, I prefer to do it just with my thumbs. And right here, I'm pretty confident that I will be able to do it just with my thumbs. Famous last words, right? So. Push it in, making sure it's all the center, and push, and boom, it cleared. And there you go. Now, let's go to the inflation part. Inflation part. Sure, I could use CO2. I don't like using CO2 because, well, it's expensive, etc., etc., and you carry it around. So that's why I love these little lysine, lysine um, pumps that are frame pumps that will get you the pressure. For the sake of the video, I'm going to use my floor pump. Take my pipe out. That's for the disc to be able to reach into the disc. Like this won't fit in the disc where the lysine pump does. And here is where having the long stem is critical. Because if you see, if I push like this, because there is no pressure, look, look, my stem, you can see my stem wants in. And sometimes you go like this and you can't get enough pressure and you, you go like this, you go and you try to pump and the air doesn't go in. You see, it, I'm having resistance but I'm not gaining traction, it's leaking everywhere. And if you do this with your CO2, well guess what? You just lost your CO2 and now what do you do? That's why I like the pumps. So how to avoid this, make sure that while you are trying to hook your air system, whether it's a CO2 or a pump, you hold the opposite side of the tire 
right on top of the rim to stop it from doing this. You see, it moves. Now I push it in, it doesn't move. So as I hold it there, I easily can put it all the way to where it needs to be with the fingers and now I lock it in place. Now I should have no problem pumping up my tire. I always go to about 20 PSI, not a dangerous pressure. Release, have a look to make sure that I have the bead all over where it needs to be that it's not anywhere else. I have a quick visual look. Again, it's worth the time, trust me. Ask me how I know. And we go through here and make sure that the tire is beaded properly all the way in. And then you can go inflate. Even at that pressure, out of a habit, I always will be holding on the other side. Now let's talk about inflation as I do this. This tire probably says, what does it say? Well, let's see, I don't ride with those tires anymore. 90, 95, I'll go to 100 just for the video. Close it, and off you go. You may notice that I don't put that little cap back on. That little cap really doesn't do you any good, doesn't help you. If you, you know, I never use them. None of my bikes have them. It's just added weight. One more step to do when you have that. So let's see what kind of tire pressure can I find the marking on this? Rotation made in Germany. Maximum impre pressure 120 PSI. And that's actually one of the reasons why these Continental tires are popular. And it's the right rotation. It's a rotational tire and it's mounted the correct way. Which again, I've found many tires on friends bikes that were the opposite way. And well, that's adds rolling resistance. So it says 120 PSI. 120 PSI, most people will go and inflate it to that no matter what. You should not do that. You should ride with whatever is adequate for your weight, which for me, it will be somewhere around 95 on the rear and 90 to 85 on the front. That's what I ride with. I'm 160 pounds and I ride on this bike. The lower tire pressure will actually give you lower rolling resistance. Yes, I did say that correctly. Most people think that it is the other way around, but it is actually the lower tire pressure within reason gives you lower rolling resistance. Because instead of having to lift the whole bike over every single pebble and crack that you go over, the tire will absorb it. It also will, instead of lifting the whole car, the whole bike, and you, it just absorbs the pebble. So you're actually losing, you're actually saving energy. Plus, if you have some kind of a sharp object and with, yeah, with a high pressure and narrow contact patch, it may just get the pressure and slice your tire as opposed to absorb it. So you're also more prone to flat with too high a tire pressure. So too low, you can get a pinch flat. Too high, you can get flats more easily. That's why you need to be in the happy medium. Same thing, uh, same thing, for cars and the load, you need to have your thing. Everything we, every, ever since we have been riding on pneumatic tires, air pressure is a big key. Any questions, send me a comment, give me a like, and I'll try to either make a new video and explain or reply. Thank you, happy Nico.